What's up, wrestling fans? Richard Boudreaux here. Welcome to a brand new edition of Kayfabe Kickout Audio for March 13th, 2013 for kayfabekickout.com. Putting the pro back in pro wrestling. On tonight's show, I have two very special guests. Uh, guest number one uh, is a guest co-hosting, uh, Anthony Cox. He is a featured columnist for kayfabekickout.com, and he is the reason why uh, people keep coming back to the site. How's it going, Anthony? It's going good. How are you doing, Rich? Can't complain. Can't complain. Uh, it's a you know decent day over in uh, my neck of the woods. And joining us is our very special guest, the and the first uh, women's pro wrestler to be on Kayfabe Kickout Audio, and not just any uh, run-of-the-mill uh, women's pro wrestler, a world a world champion, uh, NWA Women's World Champion Casey Carlisle. Casey, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm, um, I forgot that I was going to be the first female on here, so I'm completely glad to be honored at that. Thank you. How are you guys feeling? Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. I'm I'm excellent. <laughs> you know, can no excellent. All right, well that's that's good. At least neither of you said that. I would have been a little a little hurt and worried if you said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so Casey, you know, uh, so what's so for fans that uh, wrestling fans may not be uh, familiar with what what you're doing lately. Can you just like just give us an update on like what's going on like lately since since the last time you and I talked. So, uh, so yeah. So, like you said, obviously you'd want to work. You'd you'd want to wrestle more, obviously. And uh, what, like, how often, like, do you train? Like, do you train, you know, six, seven days a week, five days a week? Yeah, that's 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 definitely uh, definitely great to hear. Now, uh, our first interview that that we did, uh, which is uh, which is up on the site right now, uh, folks, uh, kfabekickout.com. Um, you you started out in 1998, and then around 2003, you took a little hiatus. Uh, was that was it? And then when you came back in 2005, was that was that kind of a hard transition for you to get to get back into the into the swing of things? Um, no, because. 
98. My my appearances on shows at that point in time were incredibly few and far between. Right. Um, I didn't have the luxury of having an outside, you know, away from the ring job. People call it a real job, and I don't like that because to me, you know, I consider wrestling to be a very real job in, mm-hmm. in that respect. But, um, you know, I, I had my outside job, and unfortunately at that time, it was one that did not allow me to have weekends off. And, of course, as we all know, the majority of shows take place on the weekend. Absolutely. Um, and because of that, I didn't, even if I did have the time off and the time away, I, I made my own decision to not be involved, to not be part of the shows, simply because I had no interest in being somebody who would show up completely randomly out of the blue for no reason whatsoever. You know, I didn't want to be like, look, there's suddenly a random chick on the outside of the ring. You know, I, I wanted it to be more meaningful than that, and I wanted it to be more regular and more consistent instead of just, oh, you know, we haven't seen her for six months, but there she is again. It just, I, I just had no interest in that. I knew that, you know, eventually, and at that time I was also still, um, I was also only a manager. I wasn't wrestling. So, I, you know, it wasn't one of those things I wanted to rush into. I, I did do some shows here and there, but it wasn't a regular thing at all. Um, but as you mentioned, though, come 2003, that's when I did have a job that allowed me to time off. And so that's when I started kind of picking up with my schedule as far as what, you know, indie wrestlers might call full-time, meaning, excuse me, every weekend or, you know, at that point in time, I was going up to a promotion in Hagerstown, Maryland every Tuesday as well. So it was every Tuesday and then every weekend as well, I was out there managing. So it became more regular then. Uh, cool. It sounds like if you wanted to go, that you, your goal was that if you're going to go, you might as well go all the way, right? Yeah, I, I just, yeah, that was really what it was. I didn't, you know, my love for this business is, is strong. Um, and I didn't want to do the business an injustice um, by, you know, like I said, just randomly showing up. You know, it was, there was absolutely no reason um, for me to be part of that show just because I could. And that might sound, that might sound backwards. It might sound like, why wouldn't you jump at the opportunity to be on any show you could be? But as I said, I was managing at the time. I wasn't in the ring. So to me, you know, I like things to mean something. I like for them to have, um, you know, more of a backstory and kind of more, you know, meat to it than just, oh, look, there's a girl we've never seen before walking out to the ring with this wrestler who we have seen before for absolutely no reason other than she's here, if that makes sense. Um, I, I just had no interest in that, so... You know, it was, I was at shows, even if I was there, I still learned plenty. I would watch the show, watch the matches. You can learn so, so much by watching. So I would still be there and still be around and part of it and part of the business, but just not be out there in front of the crowd. You're definitely a student of the game. But say that again, I'm what? I said you're definitely a student of the game. Oh, well, thank you. I, that's a huge compliment to me. Thank you. And, uh, you know, like you had mentioned, like, um, <laughs> you hit the nail around the head there, I think, that, you know, especially in pro wrestling, like fans, you know, how you said you didn't just want to take every 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 appearance. And, and you know, I find that with some wrestling fans, like, you know, that if you're not on, you know, if you're not on television, if you're not working like shows on a, on a regular basis, like they'll, you know, they'll forget about you, and you know, in in, in, in the next week. So. Mhm. Yeah. Um. You know, once once I got to 2003, and I did have the flexibility and the availability in my schedule to be more regular. That's when I really did start. Um. You know, I was I, I was there. It was like, you know, I. I I actually made my debut, um, or my re-debut, if you would, for that promotion. It was the House of Pain up in Hankerstown, Maryland. The way that I, I debuted there was I came out of the crowd to um, to help one of the wrestlers, and that was how I was introduced to that crowd. So that, at least at that point, here I am. I came out of the crowd and helped him win his match, and there's the reason why I was there managing him then for the next god knows how many years you know so it wasn't just me throwing out there with oh let me look at the lineup and pick somebody or just because i'm here and have gear i can go it was 
I'm going to be here. Let's make it mean something and count for something. And so that's what we did. Awesome. Now, when did, when did you decide to make the transition from managing to totally wrestling, like wrestling full time? Um, well, I have been training to wrestle for, for years actually. Um, and I was in training to be a wrestler in 2003 when, you know, when I was managing. Um, the reason I didn't start wrestling any earlier than that was because, and again, this is, I'll, I'll sound a little repetitive, but it's still the same reason. I didn't want to be in that ring before I felt I was ready. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and obviously, like, if you ask me, I, I probably would have, you know, kept training a little bit longer because I'm so nitpicky and I'm so you know, so much of a perfectionist when it comes to that. But I didn't want to train a little bit. And then again, just because I had the chance to wrestle, I didn't want to go in there and think to join up and uh, make women's wrestling look bad, make the business look bad, and make myself look bad. Um, I just had no interest in doing that. So I was training to be a wrestler, actively training. Um, <laughs> the way my first match came about, it was a little unorthodox. Um, I was headed to the show, it was in 2005, on July 30th, 2005, and I was headed to the show um, to be a manager, and when we arrived, one of the promoters, it was, there were two promoters running the show, one was Pops, who was off at the Wild Samoan, the other one was a guy named Travis Bradshaw, and this was in Olney, Virginia. Um, Pops told uh, Mike Trainer, who was Shorty Smalls, and the person, the wrestler that I was affiliated with as a manager, um, he pulled him aside and said, look, one of the girls backed out, she's not going to make it. Um, you know, I, I still want this women's match. Is Casey ready enough to wrestle the match tonight? And Shorty said, yeah, do it. She'll, she'll be fine. Throw her in there and she'll be good to go. Um, you know, Shorty comes back to the locker room and tells me about it. And of course I'm like, ah, and I started freaking out and immediately, you know, the butterflies just completely multiplied by a million in my stomach. And I was all shaky and had like the sweaty palms, the whole nine yards, um, because I was nervous as hell. This was something, you know, here it is. And this is going to be my first match. I wasn't mentally prepared for it or anything. It's not like I was traveling to the show expecting to wrestle that night. Um, but obviously, you know, it, happened anyway and they charged forward with it so that ended up being my first match that night it was against a girl named Chrissy Zane and um you know it it went honestly it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be um you know and that was just kind of how I, I got my start then from that point forward I was still managing and taking wrestling bookings as they would come and as I could but then over time it started becoming more, you know, I just kind of weaned off of the managing and just fell into wrestling all the time. Well, it, uh, it certainly worked for you. I mean, in eight years later, and now you're uh, now you're a world champion, so. Here we are, eight, eight years later, which, you know, to some might sound like an eternity, and to some they might be like, whoa, that's eight years. I remember those days. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's been an awesome eight years. I really cannot complain about anything or I, I, I just can't. I've been very, very fortunate, um, you know, to have the career that I've had this far, and hopefully it'll just keep getting better and better. Oh, I hope it gets better for you, too. I'm, I have to ask, though, like, how do you carry around that huge belt? That belt's huge. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's an awesome belt, I have to say. I mean, you know, like 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 I commented to you on uh, on uh, Facebook, it reminds me of you know the custom belt that was made for Andre the Giant. But you know, I, I me per yeah, that belt was huge. yeah, me personally, I like belts like that. It is it is so big. <laughs> um, you know, it's I like to think that the fit is just a good upper body work. <laughs> That's your workout um, workout for the day. It's yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's um really to be honest with you, I haven't traveled traveled with it that much. Um I I had it with me up in New Jersey, um, and then I had to fly down to Florida and back with it. And that was that was the interesting, you know, the trip to Jersey was no big deal because I, I was driving. But <laughs> when I flew to Florida <laughs> That was, it was interesting getting that sucker through uh, security and um, just carrying it. You know, it had, I had to get a, a special bag to carry it in just because it wouldn't, you know, I wanted to keep it with me. I wasn't going to check it. So, but I had to get 
find like its own specific bag that it would fit into and zip <laughs> up in oh my because God. it's so huge. I yeah. can use just anything. Um, and then just watching the people's faces in the security checkpoints in the airport was incredibly entertaining. There was one girl who <laughs> I was just watching her face as she kind of looked at it and was like figuring out what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course coming home, you know, we need we need to open your bag and check it out. And I was like, you know, feel free. And I don't know how it happened, but somehow I was the only person in security um, coming home. Wow. And so of course, so, yeah, so they have nothing else to do. So this whole crowd gathers <laughs> Blushing to be honest with you. You got the sheriff's guy there, like, oh, really? Can I hold it? Can I touch it? <laughs> just, nice. I, I get a kick out of watching everyone else get a kick out of it, you know? I yeah. Because I don't think about it really like that anymore, but I just giggle when, when I watch everyone else. It's pretty cool. Nice. It was like airport show and tell. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah, it, really, it really was. But, you know, that's. It goes with the territory, and I wouldn't change a thing for the world. So it is what it is. Not not a big deal. Awesome. Now, like getting like staying on the topic of uh, staying on the topic of titles. Now, you've held the NWA uh, Women's World Title for 144 days now. Do you think like what do you like what do you think in in your opinion is more more important when it comes to you know being a champion? The number of the number of title reigns or the num- like the the number of days you've held the title. Important. Yeah, like maybe not. Okay, maybe that's maybe more that's not. Meaningful. Yeah, more meaningful. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know that's that's hard because I think that they both. I think they both kind of are meaningful in their own way. I think they both say something about the person. Um, you know the the length of the rain. Man, you you got me with this one. Congratulations. Because <laughs> I'm sitting here, I'm trying not to give you dead air, but I'm trying to think of what my answer is at the same time. Right. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I think they're both very important. I think they're both something to pay attention to and, and to be respectful of. But at the same time, I think there's something to be said about somebody who can be a multiple-time champion. Right. Um, because to me... That exemplifies somebody who not only won the title, but then subsequently lost it, yet was able to regain it, you know, again. And I think, I think that says something. Um, I'm not taking away from the length of the reign by any means. Obviously, that's, you know, you look at somebody like, um, oh gosh, I'm going to blank out. You know, it means something when you can hold on to the title that long. Um, but at the same time, and I'll use myself, I'll, I'll you know, use myself as an example, and this is kind of throwing myself under the bus, but it's the truth, so who cares? Um, I've had it for that long, but I've, you know, I've only been involved, I've only been involved really in one title match, in one defense. Right. Um, you know, and that was back in November in New Jersey. So, so, you know, to me, and that's why I use that as an example, yes, I've held it that long, but in all fairness, I have only defended it so far that one time. Okay. So, if you look at it from that point of view, now I do have defenses that are scheduled coming up. I'm not at liberty to mention them yet, uh, the actual dates, but, um, you know, they are going to be happening, but at this point in time, I've only had that one. So, again, that's me throwing myself under the bus a little bit in that respect. Um, but I think they're both important statistics to pay attention to and, and to keep in mind. But, again, I think there's something to be for somebody who doesn't have the opportunity to hold the world title just one time, but they have been able to regain it and they've been able to hold it multiple times. Right. Excuse me, I think that speaks speaks volumes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what, do you, what, what do you think, Anthony? Well, with me, I've always been a bigger fan of the length, the length of uh, a title win because if you can have the title for a long period of time, it shows that you're the top dog and nobody can stop you. And right. at the same time, like you said, if you're only defending it once... I see where you feel that your rank, like, like it's kind of tarnished a little bit. You well, like I, I agree with you, too, Anthony. I really do. I think that being able to have longer reign, I, I think that, exactly as you said, I think that that shows a certain level of competitiveness and toughness as well. Right, right. I mean, if I, if I have the title and I have it for two years, I would like to say that I've defended it a whole bunch of times. 
have during those two years, too. Right. Meaning I'm going yeah. up against anybody that they put in front of me. Because, I mean, now it's cool to be champion a whole bunch of times. I mean, Ric Flair was the 16-time world champion, but That's at the right. same time, that also means he lost the world title 16 times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right, that's the thing. As many times as you hold it, that means you also lost it, you know, that many times plus one, you know. Um, I mean, I, I completely agree with you in that, in that viewpoint, and that's why it was kind of so hard for me to answer. It's just, I, I think there's a lot to be said for both scenarios. I honestly do. Um, like you said, Rick Flair, you know, you've got the fact you have Mula who held on to, um, you know, what was then the WWF title for, what, 20-plus 20 20 years or so? Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I think there's something to be said for for both. I really do. And me personally, um, I'm also a fan of longer longer title reigns. I think I think if you have a title that does get um, you know changes hands really often, it's hard. You know, I think that's harder on the title. And I, I it also depends on on how you know the title changes, how they occur, and so forth, the circumstances. But I agree. I, I am a fan of longer title reigns, like you are. I'm a bit old school. I don't like, I never did like frequent title changes. You know, I am I'm too. I'm such an old school kid. girl. I, I was used to Hulk Hogan being champion for three or four years. I'm used to that. You know, yeah, I hear you. Years. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, me, you know, me personally, like, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to agree with you guys that, you know, the combination of both is, is much better than, you know, than a guy. Because I find in that, like nowadays, especially in the WWE, like I mean, most of the top guys have been like Randy Orton, John Cena, Triple H, Edge. Well, Edge is not wrestling anymore, but all like almost all those guys have been you know double digit uh, you know champions. Whereas somebody like you know Bruno San Martino and more recently CM Punk, you know those you know he like Bruno didn't have the title for he didn't have the title ten times or whatever, but he had the title for seven you know seven and a half years. Mm-hmm. So. Right. I think we're all pretty much in agreement on that one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you recently uh, tried out for uh, recently tried out for TNA. You wanna you wanna just uh, talk about that? Um, yeah, I um, I had a dark match with them prior to their house show. Um, it took place on February second, prior to their house show down there in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Um, you know, it was a it was a really good night. I, I got the call about it about two days prior to the show. Um, I wrestled a girl by the name of Mia Svensson, who um, fans, you know, in this area and down in North Carolina are probably familiar with. Um, but it was really a, a great night. I really, I, you know, every time I'm asked about it, I cannot say anything negative about that night. It was a great learning experience. It was a great experience overall. Um, it was a great peek into being part of what it is that we're striving to be part of. Um, you know, just to be able to be around people who are are there, you know, doing what it is that you are there attempting to be a part of. You know, just to soak up any of the knowledge that you can get or any of the knowledge that's being passed to you voluntarily. Um, just to be able to watch, you know, the production and everything, just to be part of it. It was just, for me personally... It was just a fun, you know, it was just a fun, cool night. It was just a really good experience. Um, and it was a tease in many ways as well. It was like, you know, it's, I'm just here for a few hours, but I'm going to be back on the highway going home. But it was such a tease for, you know, something that we, or most of us in the business, are, you know, trying to obtain and something that we're trying to become. So, it was just an awesome night, and um, since February 2nd, I have been living with my fingers crossed that something may come from it or that I might get another opportunity. So, time will tell. That's been my motto lately. Yeah, hey, I hope they call you back, too. <laughs> well, but, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, the Knockouts division is, it's very, I like how those girls actually wrestle. It's not a bunch of lingerie models like over in McMahon land or anything like that. It's a bunch <laughs> of girls who are actually competitive and athletic. And, uh, and they, but they've been using a lot of the same girls for a while, so I would love like to see them add some, get some different faces up in there. I'd like for you to be one of them. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I, um, you know, I'm, 
I'm all for it. I, I would love to to have that opportunity and, and to be part of it and try to contribute something to the company. So we will see. All I can say is keep your fingers crossed for me and, and blow up impact about it and let them know. <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely keep our fingers crossed. Like, well, I mean, honestly, they'd be idiots not, not to take you. And so what were like, um, Thank you. <laughs> you're, you know, you're very welcome. Um, so what were the, what were the, the people behind the scenes like at TNA? Like the, you know, the guys like, uh, you know, Bruce Pritchard and Al Snow, like, did you get a, a chance to meet those guys or? Um, no, no, they weren't there. Um, okay. The, the guys that were there, it, uh, Zila Brown was there. He okay. Was the, the agent that was working, um, you know, couldn't have been nicer. I mean, very helpful. Um, obviously somebody who's very knowledgeable and he's been there and done that. You know, so it, it was great to be able to not only have have that experience, you know, kind of helping you beforehand, but then after the match to get the feedback, um, you know, and to kind of get the pointers. It's always, always a great thing when not only to get feedback from anybody, because another set of eyes, you know, another brain is always a good thing. You, there's always another way of looking at something that you may not think of, and. So to me, the way I feel about it, anytime anybody is willing to watch your match and give you feedback, it's it's a great thing because nobody at all has to. But to be in that situation where you do have, you know, somebody of that caliber who is watching, you know, with a very close eye, and then you can come back and get the feedback and get the knowledge. And, um, you know, that's just, it, it's a blessing, you know, and it's something that not everybody has the luxury of having. So... When you do, you just soak it up like a sponge and, and don't let it go. And that's pretty much what I did. That's so right. um, it was it was really great. I can't say anything negative at all. How was how was the feedback? The feedback was good, actually. It was it was it was very positive feedback. Um, you know, it was we we were out there about fifteen minutes prior to the start of the show that night. Um, the majority of the crowd was already in the arena when we went out. Um, you know, we had just a quick little six minute it was, it was just very you know non-stop six minute match that was just kind of hard hitting and go 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 and um it was solid you know we came back and we got we got good feedback and it, it was really a, a really positive and uplifting night it was great that's excellent yeah i was i was pleased because you know you always it's always that moment of you holding your breath waiting to just com be completely ripped apart you know, it's like, okay, let me hear what I messed up on or, you know, let me hear what I should have done or should not have done or whatever. So when you get back there and then it's positive, it's positive uh, feedback and positive things to say, then you can finally breathe again. You know, you've been holding your breath all day in anticipation. So after the match and after that, you can finally kind of relax and start breathing again. Right. Awesome. Yeah, no, I like, like when Anthony said that, you know, like, yeah, like, I, you know, I gotta, I gotta give props to the TNA because the, their women's division is like, is a hell of a lot better than, better than WWE. Um, were there, like, were there, like, did you get a chance to meet any, any of the other like knockouts when you were there? Yeah, um, the the two that were there for the match that night were Tara and Velvet Scott. Oh, nice, excellent. And, yeah, um, and you know, Velvet I had known on the Indies before, before she was signed. Um, and, but it was a it was a long long time ago, you know, that she and I had ever been on a show together. So right. it's been several years. Um, Tara I had never met before, so it was a, such a pleasure to get to meet her. Um, you know, both of them very incredibly sweet, incredibly welcoming. Um, you know, it was just it was very comfortable and very laid back. They couldn't have been sweeter. They couldn't have been nicer. Um, they were both you know they both watched our match as well and had nice things to say about it. So it it really was. It was great. It was a really great night overall. Everybody there was very welcoming and very, you know, just just couldn't have been nicer. Everyone was great. Okay, now, um, of all the other female wrestlers that are out there, is there anybody in particular that you haven't wrestled yet that you would love the opportunity to wrestle that's currently competing at any wrestling promotion that's available? Um, you know... I get asked this question so often. You would think I would have this like 